All right, guys, so I'm going to try to talk you through most of this day 11 lesson, which is on uh, mechanical waves, um, waves on a string. There's a simulation for that. Uh, Non-mechanical waves, and then bending light uh, simulation. So um, that's our, our topics. Um, so you have a PDF of this, but it doesn't show you the GIFs, so I'm trying to um, have them kind of on this video. So uh, mechanical waves are just a disturbance in matter that called, carries energy from one point to another. So it takes energy from one point to another, and the medium is the material through which the wave travels. So if you look at this uh, GIF down here of sort of like a simulation of a you know stadium wave, so if you've ever been to a sporting event where they've done the wave, um, you got the people are the medium because that's what the energy is traveling through, and then um, the energy is moving kind of left to right across the screen um, through the, the GIF. And if you look at it, the people, like when you're doing this wave, you don't like get up and start running around the stadium, you just stand up and down, but the wave travels um, through those different people through the whole stadium and travels its way around. So the person is really just moving uh, up and down a little bit, but the wave travels very far around the stadium. So um, there are two different types of mechanical waves. Um, the first one is called a transverse wave, and transverse waves are waves that travel at right angles to the vibration. So the wave motion um, is perpendicular uh, to the actual particle motion. So if you look at this, um, this simulation down here, uh, it, it is demonstrating that for you. So this is just another GIF of um, the vibration again is up and down and the wave energy is going kind of to the right in these examples. So here's a still photo of it so we can kind of break down some pieces. So um, we'll start out with just the order. So the crest is just the highest point on the wave and the trough is the lowest point. Uh, the equilibrium position would be the position where it's not disturbed. So if it was just like the slinky and the slinky was not moving, that's the equilibrium position. And then the highest point you raise it up to would be the crest and the lowest point would be the trough. Um, the amplitude is just the distance between that equilibrium position and the crest. So uh, it can be positive or negative and that's what's in that note. Uh, a couple more uh, ideas. So um, amplitude is just a measure of energy. So the bigger the wave, the more energy. That makes sense if you imagine standing at the beach um, and a wave hitting you, the bigger the wave, the more energy it has and the more kind of change it can do to your matter. So we talked about energy in that sense with work power and energy. So the more energy the wave carries, the greater the amplitude. That's that's what it is. Um, I don't know if I have, I do have wavelength there. So wavelength, um, this is a Greek letter lambda. So that symbol um, is the distance between identical points on two consecutive waves. Uh, and the distance between those is the wavelength. So it's from crest to crest, or you can measure from trough to trough, or you can measure from any equal point, so this point to this point, and that would be a wavelength. Um, trying to think of anything else on this slide that is really important. Uh, and then, you know, example wave on a slinky. So this is kind of the slinky uh, GIF. We would do that in class, but we don't get to do it. So um, longitudinal waves are waves that travel parallel to vibrations. So um, if you look at the diagram here, you're moving your hand kind of left to right, which is what's going to happen up here. And um, the vibration is going in the same direction as the energy of the wave or the wave motion. So the wave uh, is carrying the energy to the right, and the particles are kind of shifting back and forth left to right. So again, particles same direction. Um, instead of having crests and trough, they have compressions, which are areas where particles are close together. And then rare factions are areas where the particles are spread out. Um, these are also sometimes known as com compression waves instead of longitudinal, but longitudinal is generally the terminology I use. This is a, uh, a simulation or a visualization of what a sound wave will look like. So if you imagine these are air particles uh, sort of running into each other, um, when you have uh, high um, kind of uh, areas where the particles are close together, again, that's the compression and where it's sort of stretched out so that area between, you can see that the compression or a um, rarefaction uh, keep kind of spreading our, its way or moving its way across. So this kind of constant pulse is happening where the, the air particles kind of constantly get compressed together by this red bar. Um, and then that compression travels through all of the air particles to the right. So even though if you just track one little air particle, if I keep my cursor on that one air particle, it doesn't move very far again, but the energy gets carried through all the particles um, throughout the whole medium. So um, I was going to ask you some questions, so uh, you can kind of think about these as we talk through them. So which type of mechanical wave is present in each slinky? So you got a, a GIF of the slinky waves, and you got to decide uh, which one you think is transverse and which one you think is longitudinal, and that should be pretty easy based on the 
image and the pictures that we've seen. Um, so I want you to think about that and be able to give two facts that would help support your answer. So again, this is like um, a test type question that you might see in the future. So you're going to need to be able to identify different types of waves, um, whether it's transverse or longitudinal, be able to label the parts, be able to um, describe how they move, uh, draw pictures of it, things like that. So, um, so these questions over here are ones that should go with this. So obviously, uh, this is like the first one we did, so I can move the green boxes now. Um, the first one is the transverse wave, and obviously the only one that's left is the longitudinal wave. So even though I got a black spot there, I don't know where that came from. So uh, the compression going across, again, you have a, a crest and a trough on this one. Uh, the rarefaction is where it's kind of stretched out in front of it here, so that's where it got stretched out. There. So um, there are your different parts of your waves and, and transverse and longitudinal, so that's pretty good. Um, some other properties of waves that you should know about, and a lot of these we introduced during that circular motion uh, unit and activity where you guys had to you know, keep doing the things until you got it right, and that was annoying for a lot of you, but um, hopefully these ideas came back or come back and make sense. So frequency, again, it's lower, lowercase f, um, and it's the number of cycles that are given in a period of time. So how, to, how often uh, a cycle repeats itself. In this case, it would be how often the oscillation occurs or the vibration occurs per uh, unit at a time. And again, that's measured in hertz. Um, period is the inverse of that. So we studied that and figured that out. And it's the time for one complete cycle and that unit's in seconds. And then wave speed, uh, you just have to multiply the frequency times the wavelength. So if you know those two things, uh, you can figure out the uh, wave speed. Oh, I didn't cover up the answers here, but that's okay because it's a pretty basic example. So it says, um, a wave has a wavelength of 2.5 meters and a frequency of 4 hertz, and we want to know what is its speed. So again, when you go through this problem, uh, the wavelength is this kind of weird symbol, uh, lambda, and frequency is lowercase f. So I can't draw either one very well on the mouse pad, but you get the idea. Um, and then it says, what's the speed? So we're just going to use v equals f lambda for that. So it's 4 times 2.5, so that's 10 meters per second. So that's how fast it's going. And then um, for the period, you just do the inverse of the frequency. So it would be 1 divided by 4, and that would get you 0.25 seconds. Um, so I'm going to just take you through the waves on a string lab and then stop there for a second. So uh, this is online on D2L, the, um, the directions and the link. And so you're just kind of going through and, and checking out um, what's going on with waves in a more... Uh, hands-on approach or simulation-based approach. So if I type in FET, uh, and then I go to simulations, and I can go waves on a string. Um, there are a couple of them, so just make sure you're picking the right one. So waves on a string. And you want the HTML5 one, because that'll run on everything. Um, you just press play. And then you're just going to follow directions. So I think it tells you to go to no end and put it on oscillate. And I'm going to put it on slow motion because that goes too fast. And we're going to get rid of dampening because we don't want it to our wave to die out. Um, so that's that's basically it. So that's your wave um, in terms of like how it starts out. You get to change the amplitude, the frequency. Um, you can click on some measuring tools. So rulers, you can pause it. Um, to measure sort of the wavelength. So if I measure the wavelength of this one, it looks like it's about six uh, centimeters for this wavelength. You can measure the amplitude with this ruler. Um, the orange line is the equilibrium. So I'm going to measure to the highest point. It looks like that one's about a half of a centimeter, if I read that right. Um, so uh, you're going to be able to measure those. There's also a timing device, so you can figure out the period, and from that you can figure out the frequency. And once you know the frequency and the wavelength, you can figure out um, the velocity or the speed of the wave, which we just talked about a minute ago. So um, the directions are all on that page. Just one kind of subtle thing that um, if you look at this gray circle here, um, you can hit this little button to step it to different points. So I would suggest when you're doing the timing aspect of it, you start it where this is like at 12 o'clock. So it's at the highest point here. This is at the highest point or the amplitude or the crest of this transverse wave. Um, and then if you press play over here, it'll start recording time as you step through. So as you look at this, as I keep clicking this button, the wave is move, moving. Um, and you're going to take it uh, to measure the period. You need to make that clock or that gray dot go all the way around once. So that would be one complete wave cycle. So it's gone from the highest point all the way down to the lowest point. 
and then all the way back up to the highest point. So I don't think I set up the right frequency or amplitude here um, for you guys, but uh, just to kind of give you a way to measure and, and feel better about that. So I think I'm pretty close there to the um, to the highest point at 12. So that would be my time. So that's uh, 0.67 seconds. So this would be one second, this would be 10 seconds, uh, et cetera. So um, you would just you would just do that and that's an easy way to kind of record one period of time. So hopefully that's helpful and we'll get you through that uh, simulation. So I'll stop the video here so it doesn't get too long and I will talk to you guys on the next video.